Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me today in this live webinar on understanding the causes and natural treatments to anxiety. Now, um, let's be clear what we're talking about a certain category of mental state according to Ayurveda. So this mental state in Ayurvedic terms would we, we would just say would you say like high prana or vata vata is air and this is a, uh, a one of the three doshas and its uh, gunas or its qualities are light cold dry and active so this is a, a vata in the mind you could say vata the mind like air in the mind think of it like that this is a state so this type of anxiety we're talking about is this type when a person is lightheaded spacey nervous uh um, and uh, hypersensitive and fearful that type of you know mental state that's the category that we're talking about understanding and treating so there could be other causes to a person's anxiety it could be you could have had trauma in life you could even be taking some medication that's creating anxiety or nervousness so we, we can't cover every cause of anxiety and nervousness but there is one category in ayurveda they call it the mind is called mano or mano vayu sutra the mind system the mind is like a system just like a respiratory system cardiovascular system you know there's a mind system and what is it processing not air not blood but thoughts you know it's thinking it's processing thoughts so it's a system and it when in this case we're talking this mind or mano vayu sutra is too vata or too active too light so it's move it's a lot of thinking overthinking thinking 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 you know over and over and over and this type of thinking is creating stress anxiety nervousness and can lead to ir irritability anger and even depression and we'll cover these in subsequent webinars is depression and anger but we're focused on this one category here and this category we can notice when you or somebody's in this category because there's a certain lightheadedness so be other symptoms like dizziness spaciness forgetfulness hypersensitivity like oh don't touch me and i'm frightened you know like this you know so that's the sign of uh if it's uh, a person is in this category which again i'll call vata or air in the head system <laughs> in the mind system that would be the ayurvedic interpretation of this so there's uh many causes to this state of mind so always it's important when you're diagnosing yourself or uh, trying to understand your patient or your own mind is to first not jump to the treatment which i'm not going to do i'm not going to say oh take this take this herb no First, you have to always remove the causes. When you're treating a patient, always there are causes. People are always causing their own condition to some degree. We like to blame somebody else, the boss, the ex-spouse, <laughs> or the current spouse, <laughs> or the six kids, you know, or the mother-in-law, you know, there's always somebody we like to blame. But in fact, you know, we have to look at our own. Uh, in this case, our own mind, our own thinking, and look at what we may be doing to cause this state of anxiety, restlessness, and even state of fear, or air, excess activity in the mind. So first is uh, incorrect diet. That's right, incorrect diet. I didn't say bad diet. I didn't say not good diet. You know, good and bad, these are simple adolescent terms that we'll, we'll leave to adolescent children and uh, politicians. <laughs> a little jab there. Um, but uh, we, want, we, we have to think a little beyond just good and bad. We want to think of what is the correct foods for a person in this state. And actually, it's this person we're talking about here behind me, this thin, light, cold, dry person who often gets a little gas, bloating, and constipation. We call it vata prakriti, or vata body type. 
So their nature is to have these physical health imbalances like gas, bloating, sensitivity, and nervousness and anxious. So if this person is eating the incorrect diet for vata, even though it could be a healthy diet, then they will aggravate this vata, this air quality. And this will and go to their head and also and create this type of nervousness and anxiety. Air in the head, <laughs> basically. Too much air. So what would do that? Uh, first, just skipping meals, just not eating. If you look at this person, uh, they look thin. They should be eating three meals a day. But if they don't and they just eat uh, breakfast, maybe have a little smoothie, which is cold, which is not good for vata too. This is increasing vata cold. Well, warm is balancing vata. You know, warm, you put a, a warm heating pad on your abdominal area. It feels good. If you drink cold water, you get gas and bloating. It is in disturbing your vata. So if you feel your chair vata there, Lisa, <laughs> uh, you know, those who are texting, feel free to text. You know, uh, then you, you're in the right class because this is the type of person that we're talking about balancing here. It's balancing this vata. We have to balance the vata so the air is coming down. And then, then the anxiety, nervousness, overthinking will reduce. So if this person isn't eating, they're skipping meals or eating light, just salads, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, no animal protein. Um, and they're very thin. You know, maybe they want a lot of Instagram pictures. <laughs> so maybe they got a good Instagram account, but they have, may have a lot of anxiety and nervousness. You know, oh, yes, Andy, a good question. Their bloating is abdominal distension. And this is common for the same type of person because there's a connection with a digestion. When you have abdominal distension, you actually have a lot of air in your colon and your large intestines. So, you know, that's a sign you have too much air. And this is what this anxiety state is called in Ayurveda, too much air in the head, too light, ungrounded, moving too quickly. Um, and it creates this anxiety, nervousness, and fearful state we're talking about. So this person has to uh, eat. They can't skip meals. Skipping meals will make the whole condition worse. And many people are like that. If you don't feed me for three days, I'm starting to get a little anxious. Maybe I'm going to lean more towards irritability because I'm not this type. You know, I'm this type over here, the pitta. So, you know, I'm going to get more irritable if I don't eat. But this type, if they don't eat, is a vata prakriti or, you know, type of person who's thin, light, cold, dry. And they become anxious when they don't eat. So if you're not, if you already know that you get anxious and uh, sensitive and nervous when you don't eat, well, you've got your answer right there. You can't miss meals. No fasting for you. No juicing for you. No eating salads and light foods. You need sweet potatoes and butter. And very difficult for this person to be a vegetarian. And even more difficult to be vegan because they need the animal protein. They need that meat to ground them out and to stay grounded. It doesn't have to be red meat. It could just be fish. Fish is one of the best for them. Fish and butter, little yogurt, you know, extra little fat and animal protein to ground them out. So you're thinking in terms of grounding, grounding the person out. When a person is nervous and anxious and, and on the edge, you're in Ayurveda, this is called, like I said, air in the head. So we want to ground the person down. We don't want to have them, you know, be too uh, spacey. We want to even give them a nice full meal. That's good, Glenn. Wild salmon, exactly. And we don't want this person to avoid all grains, too. They need the grains. Yeah, that's right, Lisa. If you don't eat, you get dizzy, low blood sugar, brain fog, you know. And so it's very important to eat at a regular time, breakfast on time, lunch on time, maybe even a nice little snack in the afternoon and dinner. And all should be not weight loss foods. No, no, no. It should be grounding food, sweet potato, butter, rice, you know, fish, you know, <laughs> these type of things, apple, you know, and for snacks could be banana, gray, uh, banana, sweet dates, you know, things that are nourishing, nourishing that, uh, that make you feel grounded so this is yeah exactly sandy comfort food <laughs> you don't want to do don't want to be skipping meals so that's one cause of anxiety which people don't think about and in fact the person who has this air in the head vata the manavaya sotra you know they they tend to also you know not be anxious lightheaded underweight and not sleep very well 
you know so they also the sleep insomnia is just a symptom of this insomnia by itself is not you know it's a symptom of this what we're talking about today the same state because this person is lying in bed thinking 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 instead of sleeping 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 <laughs> you know because they're too light because they had salad for dinner and if they would have had rice and sweet potatoes and some fish you know they'd be sleeping better and if they put on more weight in fact a lot of clients they come in and they're this type thin cold light dry anxious nervous poor sleep gas bloating we meet them every day you know um it's like i'm like a car mechanic and it's a type of car we're used to fixing it <laughs> and you know uh yeah that's right there lisa i'm glad you're at the right place there that's right you probably have insomnia too it's going all together and a lot of times when I treat the client, I tell them, you eat the butter, you have the sweet potatoes, you forget this vegan thing, you just eat it, you enjoy. And sometimes they go, but I thought butter was. I said, no, it's, don't think. Do you love butter? And they go, yeah, I like butter. And then I say, eat bananas. And they go, I thought uh, bananas have too much sugar. And I go, don't, don't, there you go. This thinking is the big problem here. I said, don't think, just tell me, do you like bananas? Do you love bananas? They go, I love bananas. There you go. You have to follow your own intuition you can't just go by what people tell you and what people read you have to you have to tune in to your own body and that's what i'm doing with my patients you know of course ayurveda is a system so i can classify you but i still to classify you and understand you i have to tune in to your uh your your system and your state of mind and physical state um and uh, so you you need a regular routine regular foods not missing meals and warm he heavy grounding foods okay that's first thing <laughs> and and when you put on weight then a lot of these problems will go away like i was saying a lot of clients come and they're anxious and they come back a month later and they say all my anxiety sleep problems went away but the bad news is i put on nine pounds and i go that's not bad news that's the reason why your anxiety went down and your 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 sleep improved because many people in this category particularly women with a lot of instagram likes are underweight because they're starving themselves and they wonder why the body's nervous and anxious because it's always in a state of being hungry you're starving yourself so if you just start eating your three meals a day the weight comes up and then comes up and then it just plateaus out and you're still a thin person as far as everybody else is concerned you just know you have seven more pounds and a little more fat on you Hopefully that fat's in the right place. You know what I mean there, ladies. And um, yeah, snacking, good question, Sandy. You should never snack on crackers, cookies, and nuts or you ruin your digestion. You just snack on fruit, bananas, dates, and things if you don't have high blood sugar. If you have high blood sugar, we have to you know, have a different type of snacking for you. So digestion is also key here because if your digestion's poor, a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, a lot of constipation, not eating much because you're blocked up, then um, you won't be eating much because you're constipated, you're bloated, and you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you know. So that's when you have a digestive problem, you basically can't eat this food, can't eat that food, you know, and this you start eliminating foods. This means you have a digestive problem. You can't just blame the food all the time. Your digestive system's not working. If you can't eat a piece of bread, your digestive system's not working. You know, <laughs> we love to bread, blame the gluten. <laughs> But, you know, once you're if you're a human being and you're having some nice whole wheat bread from health food store homemade and you should be able to eat it that's an indication of your own digestion. So uh, digestion is critical because if your digestion is poor, then you have another uh, result in another issue. You won't be gaining the weight that you need to be grounded and the body not to, to be calm and secure because the body likes a little extra fat because then it's relaxed. You miss a meal and it's not stressed out. Overweight people are overweight. You know, they may have 30, 40, 50 pounds extra, but they're not stressing when they miss a meal because the body's not stressing because it knows we got some reserves. Those thighs will get us through the afternoon, maybe even a couple of days, maybe even a few weeks. You know, <laughs> it's a stored energy in this excess fat. No, of course, excess fat too much has got a lot of health uh, uh, hazards to it but you're, you're not stressing out you're you're not hungry <laughs> that's the, the, the pro so you have to find a balance if you're underweight you're gonna have more stress basically if you have just a little fat and the body feels comfortable it's getting fed three four times a day then it starts feeling more relaxed you know about this so um 
if you are having digestive problems, you could say you're having malabsorption, which we can see by indentations on the side of the tongue, gas, bloating, constipation. These are all signs of poor digestion. Then you're going to end up in time of nutritional deficiencies. And nutritional deficiencies, particularly of the B vitamins, uh, will create more anxiety, more nervousness. And sometimes we see this with people who have been no grains, no grains, you know, so then they're not getting any B vitamins and this is creating more anxiety. Even overweight people who should not be eating a lot of grains, definitely not wheat, and oats because they're overweight, you know, where they leave out all the grains because we tend to be a little extreme um, in our society. Then, then what happens is even an overweight person can start to have anxiety because they depleted themselves of all this uh, comfort food, the grains, which we now know included the B vitamins. So you don't want to deplete yourself nutritionally. So um, skipping meals and having malabsorption will result in depletion of the body. And, um, you know, we should, that's a good question there, Sandy, what size? You should eat your three meals till you start to feel full. You don't measure portions. You you got to listen to the body. I'm full. I'm done. And then you got to wait three hours before you have another meal. You can't keep snacking on crackers and chips or nuts. So you end up ruining your digestion and you end up trying to graze, which the human body just can't graze. It just kind of has bad digestion and gets blocked up. And then you ultimately have malabsorption. Malabsorption is going to result in fatigue, you know, ultimately. So digestion is important. Uh, nutrition ultimately is important because it's connected to your digestion. And uh, next we'll cover other cause is a lifestyle. Like, you know, what's your lifestyle? Uh, do you have time to relax, rest, chill out? time by yourself? Or are you pushing yourself all day long? And of course, if you keep pushing yourself a lot, that's very stressful. Over demanding life, not having enough downtime, you know. Um, you know, before coronavirus, you know, a lot of us were really overworked, you know. And one benefit, you know, if you still are working, but maybe you're working less, you're not as busy, you may find that you're more relaxed. It can be to your advantage to not have as much work and not stress. So I think a lot of people take on more than they can chew, so to speak, um, do uh, too many projects, uh, too many children maybe, <laughs> and uh, too many jobs, too many companies, uh, too many expense, you know, that will create stress. I see a lot of people, if you have a lot of ex uh, expenses, a lot of bills, and uh, it's going to create stress in your life. If you're spending more than you're able to, you're earning and you have a lot of debt, this is also going to create stress. But I'm not here to give you financial planning, but I'm talking about your lifestyle. You're going to feel more peace by having money in the bank and knowing that you're safe in case we have another pandemic or something come along. Um, than you are by buying a lot of things and being in debt. Debt's going to create more stress. Buying things is only short-term happiness, but if you got you got to pay for it. You got to have the. It becomes an expense, and you you're going to feel more peace of mind, as my beloved mother would say, by having savings in the bank and not spending. So, and you're going to have more peace of mind by uh, knowing that you're secure financially. So this is very important. So, you know, you want to eliminate things in your life that you know are creating stress. So uh, next we'll talk about your environment because your mind is supported by and controlled by what system in the body? The nervous system. That's right. So if your nervous system is agitated, if you had a double espresso coffee and you're all, the nervous system is wired, well, it's going to stimulate the mind. So you, you have to look at all your senses because it's your senses that are affecting your nervous system, your sense of taste, sense of smell, your sense of sight, sense of hearing, and your sense of touch. All you should look at all of these senses. And that's what we want to uh, affect the, by changing our environment and changing what our senses are sensing will affect our nervous system and then ultimately affect our mind. I'll give you an example. Flowers. You put beautiful flowers in the room. This is calming for the eyes. 
calming for the nose. Two senses are being affected. And you feel pleasant when you come in the room and there's mini flowers. I have a waterfall outside. And a waterfall makes a nice, pleasant sound. And I have one outside the window of my bedroom. And I can hear it at night. And I often go to sleep listening to the waterfall, the water uh, falling. And it looks beautiful. It looks nice. And I have ducks, too. So I'm looking at the ducks swimming, the waterfall falling. So I'm pleasing my ears and my eyes through the waterfall. Nice music. Pleasant music. Nice for the ears. Pleasant pictures. Nice for the eyes. Nice. Yeah, very good, Sandy. Lighting. Nice candles. A warm bath. Salt bath. Nice for the body, for the touch. A soft uh, uh, a bed. That's right, a Japanese pond, Glenn. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you have in your backyard, wonderful. I love it, yes. I have the little pond with the ducks in my yard. And it's very pleasant. In fact, I saw in some ancient text for certain type of neurological states, like uh, even like schizophrenia, they call it something different. They said, have the person watch birds in a pond. That's just what they said thousands of years ago. Now, I have birds, and I have like a little waterfall in a pond. Very peaceful, very. Just watching the birds is just enough activity to distract you from thinking. You don't want to be thinking. Thinking is causing a lot of problems. We're going to talk about that. But you want to change the environment. If you have loud music going, it's going to aggravate the nerves, aggravate the mind. If you have flashing lights and things in your house, all this electronics, that's going to stimulate the mind. You have all this electronic EMF and frequencies all stimulating the nervous system, affecting the nervous system, and then affecting the mind. So you must look around and change your environment. Very important. And next we look at the mind. Because the mind itself, the thinking process, is something that we should be masters of. And when we have fear, when we have anxiety, this is often we've lost control of our own mind. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Thinking of the past. You know, somebody like, you should have. He should have. <laughs> I should have. This, this type of person is stuck in the past. They keep thinking of the past, regurgitating and talking about the past, worried, complaining about the past, creating their own stress. And then there's other people that don't really talk about the past. They're all worried about the future. What if? What if? This could happen. That could happen. They're creating a stress by the thoughts of thinking of the past and the future. So that's why in yoga, pranayama, breathing practices, and asana, you know, that is very important. It's a, it's a type of teaching to teach your mind to stay still and not wander. Like not wander to the past, not wander to the future, but be in the presence. That's right. So when the mind is in the presence, there's no stress. There's only peace. You're only observing. And in, uh, in India, there's many kinds of training that people do um, where they put a candle and they stare at the candle every day, just a few minutes. That's to train the mind to stay focused. And it's not easy to stare at a candle for five minutes. Five minutes feels like a long time. That's because our minds are used to multitasking on the computer, answering the phone, talking to people. And even multitasking itself is stressful for the mind because, in fact, the mind really only can focus on one thing at a time. And if you're doing multiple things, then this is stressing your mind. So you want to take your time, focus on one thing at a time, forget the past. It's gone. Nothing you can do. Don't worry about the future. Nobody knows what will happen next. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen next. So you just have to stay in the moment, do what you can in the moment, and, and, and not think too much. That's the bottom line. And many people with anxiety, I give them the herbs, change the diet, tell them if they have any worries, come talk to me. You don't need to Google on anymore on the Internet. Um, and uh, my last advice is just try not to think. And they say, well, how could I live without thinking? I said, no problem. You're married, right? Yeah. You have uh, how many children? Three children? And you have a job? Well, you don't have any time for thinking. That's a luxury. You can maybe on vacation, you can go to meditate in the mountains and think about life. But now you have three kids, husband, job. You just focus on doing. <laughs> 
doing. You get up on time, you have your breakfast, you cook for the kids, you know, you go to work and you just focus on what you need to be doing in the moment. No need to think. Thinking gets us in trouble. Now, there's times we want to think if you're a young lady and somebody says, hey, jump in the back of my car, you better think this can't be good. So there's times to use your head, <laughs> particularly when you're a teenager. Think first, you know. So if you're a teenager, you're better to think because we know teenagers do stupid things. <laughs> but for the rest of us who are adults and we're not going to do stupid things, we're just, and we have a, plenty of responsibilities and we shouldn't be uh, worried about the future and, the, and uh, thinking too much of the past. Or not at all. Just stay in the moment, do what we have to do, do what is necessary. So try to concentrate on your thinking, do yoga, do breathing practices, do meditation, what you can to steal your mind. And many people have told me that they came to me, I changed their diet, they felt better, they took the herbs, the herbs really helped, but then they, then they, their mind was feeling more calm. So then they went, did a class on meditation and that's it. Once they had that meditation technique down every day, no more stress, no more anxiety and didn't need the herbs anymore. So it shows you the power ultimately is within you to steal the mind. But the herbs can help and, uh, and having the body not be stressed by being nutritionally deficient or underweight is still very important. So uh, we talked about controlling our environment and making things nice for our senses. We talked about the diet. We talked about lifestyle. Um, we talked about, you know, also the importance of sleep, you know, poor sleep. Um, and we talked about, you know, stealing our mind and trying to stay in the moment. And so if we know that the goal is not to overstimulate our nervous system and aggravate our nervous system, we could say, which is going to aggravate our thinking and overstimulate our, our thinking, then we, the first step we need to make is to eliminate stimulants. What are stimulants? Yeah, that's right, folks. Coffee. <laughs> Uh, coffee, green tea, black tea. Yeah, I know, Darren. I, I can see the sad face. But this is a true reality. If you're overthinking, not sleeping, you're anxious, then coffee is aggravating your condition. And I know uh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard, but I only have one cup in the morning, I would have a lot more money uh, because people think like this. But in fact, that coffee, caffeine is in your blood for days definitely at night. And it's very stimulating and aggravating for your nervous system. And often what happens is people were very, this very busy and active in their lives and, you know, most of their youth. And then when they got overwhelmed with work and skipped meals and became depleted, they were starting to crash, lose their energy, maybe through malnutrition, um, lack of uh, eating and uh, depletion. Then they just took coffee to what we could say, push through it. And this push through it could go on for 10 years, 20 years till those kids grow up. <laughs> and then uh, then they see that they're, you know, have this adrenal fatigue when you can't have energy without the coffee. Then, you know, you've burned out your adrenals, you've burned out your reservoir. And so it can take some time to recover from that, even six months, one year minimum to really recover. But putting on the weight. And uh, all the other suggestions I've made will help. And of course, the herbs will help too. And often we can give other herbs, which I'll talk about, that can help you with overcoming this type of uh, uh, adrenal fatigue or burnout. So you can withdraw from your addictive coffee. And uh, of course, there's other addictions as well. And that is uh, sugar, sweets, candies, cookies, chocolate. Chocolate is very stimulating. I know many, it has magnesium, but <laughs> it's very stimulating. And I'm not saying that um, uh, your you know, coffee's bad. If you're an overweight, heavy person who's lethargic, slow, and sleeps heavy and can't get out of bed in the morning, then have your espresso in the morning. And yes, uh, Sandy, you know, a dandy blend. This is made of dandelion, burdock, I, I believe, and uh, I think roasted dandelion. So it has that robust flavor. But I'm going to suggest, of course, some other herbs that can be more soothing and even healing for the nervous system. And that, in fact, many of these herbs are, we could say, food for the nervous system to help them heal from their aggravated state. 
So shall we cover some of these herbs now? Let's start with a few Western herbs. Let's see here what we got. Oh, one of my favorite herbs that would, if you could just make this one tea, we're going to start with the Nervines first. Uh, you go for it there, Glenn. You go for it. I feel you. Uh, passionflower. Very uh, nice, soothing Nervine. Um, and it's working very good on the nervous system. Not enough, not sedative to make you sleepy, but just nice to take the edge off of you. Now, um, and we also have a skull cap. Now, skull cap is another nervine, but a little stronger. Um, and it could be used even to help induce sleep. It's a little stronger. Uh, motherwort, which we use mostly helping uh, to calm the heart muscles. We use this in heart palpitations. And the same type of person has anxiety and nervousness, you may find has the mind singing too much and the heart is racing. So when you have this case, then we use more motherwort. It's good for the nerves, but particularly good for um, uh, heart palpitations. And, and this type of nervousness can be a cause of high blood pressure. There's many causes of high blood pressure. Yes, Lisa, you could just make passion flower tea. Um, now, we could add more to it. Um, I'm, at least we could add a little motherwort to it. Uh, what else we got here? Um, now, this is an oat straw is uh, very nutritious as far as, and it's considered very soothing for the nerves. That's why we always recommend people with a lot of anxiety to have oatmeal. Oatmeal is very, it's almost like sedative if you drink to eat too much. Some people will say, if they don't have anxiety, I eat a bowl of oatmeal and I go to sleep. But if you have a lot of anxiety and you're nervous and you have a big bowl of oatmeal, you're perfect. <laughs> But if already, you wouldn't want to do this if you're uh, slow and sluggish and sleepy in the morning. You have a big bowl of oatmeal. You're going to go back to sleep. But oats is very, it's not so much like a nervine. You don't really feel more relaxed, but it you feel more nurtured, healed. It's like food for the nerves, oats. So um, here's a tea I have right here. And it's a using these herbs that I just mentioned. There we go. Relaxing and calming tea. There it goes. Reduces anxiety and stress. Works like a champ. Been selling this for decades. Now, lemon balm is from the mint family, but this is this is the lemon balm that's a little more nervine. There's your skull cap, catnip, which I didn't bring down because it's up on the very top of the shelf, so the cat can't get it. So I forgot it. Um, there's your motherwort, which I talked about. Lavender, which I'm out of right now, so I didn't bring it. But nice smell, nice nervine. There's your oat straw. And passion flower, which is really almost the key herb here. Rosemary, just helping with the circulation, kind of like a catalyst, you know, helping all the herbs work together. Rose petals, just because it makes it smell nice and you get that special rose scent to it. Um, and cinnamon, again, like rosemary, like a catalyst, kind of making all the herbs work together. Because it's good to have like a little carminative herb in there, a little warming herb to help the the formula work better so you know these formulas they work better than just single herbs so that formula there that you see is going to work better than just passion flower and it's definitely going to taste better with the lavender and the rose petal it's going to work better because the cinnamon and the rosemary bringing it all together you know yeah no not uh, it's a good question there lisa we're not using much chamomile if you're really anxious you know you could put a little chamomile in there Chamomile is uh, kind of a sleeping, more of a sedative herb. And, you know, we definitely have it right here. So now we'll talk about a little bit more stronger sedatives. There's the chamomile right there. Yeah, I mean, just smell it. It makes you a little sleepy just smelling it there. Um, and and a more, a more sedative herbs, hops. They make beer from. That's right. <laughs> Very sedative. Um, and then poppy seeds, you know, this is from the opiumate uh, family. Poppy. This is California poppy. Illegal in some countries, even in this form. You can't be shipping this poppy seed all over the place. They get a little sensitive when they see those seeds. Um, but here um, in California, it's fine. And definitely a sedative. So there we put all those together and we make uh, a tea. Uh, here I did, uh, here's the label of the tea right here. 
sleeping tea. That's where we use the chamomile to answer your question there. And here I'll show you the label. There it is, sleeping tea. There we go. There it's now it's focused. Relaxes the mind, calms the nerves. There's the lemon balm. Lemon balm's like a filler, really. You know, it's tasty. It's a mint family, but it's not too stimulating like peppermint. It's a little more calming. Catnip. Catnip's more of a sedative than, you know, um, uh, passion flower, even though passion flower's in there. But there's your chamomile. Chamomile's a big portion of this, maybe 30%. There's lavender for the scent, for the passion flower, for the nerves. And there's the two big heavy hitters, poppy seed and hops. And then we put in a little licorice. And licorice is that kind of catalyst making it all work together better. And um, and we put a little uh, rose hips in it or rose petals. Um, and that's working very nice, very more sedative. Now, there are some people, if they're having anxiety attack, can actually have that sleeping tea, chamomile, hops, passion flower, poppy seed with a little licorice. And they can be drinking that. Uh, and during an anxiety attack and feel balanced and feel better. But for the rest of us, we would feel sleepy. Now, remember, we mentioned earlier um, that um, if you're ad addicted to or hooked on coffee, it's going to be hard to drop the coffee. So you need something that's what we call an adaptogen herb. One herb helps you, gives you a little energy, um, but... Uh, you know, doesn't uh, stress you out or aggravate your nervous system. Um, because if you're hooked on coffee and you stop and then you have the relaxing tea, you may just go to sleep. So you probably need what we call adrenal tea, which are basically an adaptogens. There's two adaptogens in here. Uh, the first one, of course, ashwagandha, the most famous Ayurvedic herb that's an adaptogen. Adaptogen means it's adapting to you helping you with stress and giving you energy. So you can drink it right up till bedtime and still sleep. And then the next one is a lethro. A lethro is, we call it, you know, the poor man ginseng or Siberian ginseng. So it's a little stimulating, but not so stimulating like Korean ginseng. Licorice root, soothing, cinnamon, cardamom, you know, for the digestive effect to allow you to digest the ashwagandha. Because ashwagandha is a heavy herb and, you know, to need to digest it. So we put a little cardamom in it. It's very pleasant tasting. Um, and you could have this in the morning. So, you know, very common, I may give people the uh, a, a adrenal tea in the morning to just kind of get them going. Relaxing tea in the afternoon at the end of work to start chilling them out. And then ultimately, you know, sleeping tea after dinner. Very nice. And that's just using Western herbs. Now, if uh, we use uh, there's other herbs we could use, like this one is relaxing. It's what I take, you know, not so much for stress. It's for brain tea, but it's a little relaxing using Brahmi. Brahmi is a premier herb for the mind and the nerves and supporting the nervous system. So it talks more about cognitive function and circulation, but it's nice during the day where you're working. It takes the edge off you. There's a lemon balm in there again, the Brahmi, and the Ginkgo is, you know, for the mind. Go to Colas for the circulation. Rosemary and ginger are the catalyst making the formula work nice so those are options that you could have during the day why have water when you can have relaxing tea brain tea better oh, it reminds me let me have some of my relaxing tea right now okay so now we can look at um, some other forms of herbs some western herbs when I mean Indian herbs when you ingest an herb for example it's going to be uh, more effective than if you just um, uh, have it in a tea. So if you really have a lot of anxiety, we have a few formulas. Calming formula. This one's calm and cool for anxiety. Brahmi, Shang Pushpi, Jatamatsi, and Tagar. Tagar is, they call Indian valerium. So there's a little valerium in here. Jatamatsi, Shang Pushpi are nerve vines. You could say similar to a passion flower in that sense. And um, but your the difference is when they're in this form, is that you're ingesting the whole herb. So it's much more effective. So if you're really having a panic attacks, then um, then I will recommend you you take the calming one in the relaxing tea. 
And sometimes the people come back and say the relaxing tea is nice tasting, but it's this calming formula that's, you know, really helping me to uh, stay balanced, grounded, and calm. And I know people that uh, some of my clients, they take one, two teaspoons in the morning and it keeps them calm all during the day. So taking one teaspoon, two teaspoons of the calming herbs, you're ingesting them. You just put them in a little hot water, shoot them down, and you're ingesting the whole herb. No de decoction. You're digesting the herbs. Much more effective. And during the day, they just drink the relaxing tea. I have other clients, and they say, well, they're, they were on maybe anxiety medication or they have a very high stress life. They're doing the relaxing tea all day with the calming formula in it three, four times a day. Um, and, you know, we have some of these herbs in a single form there. This is, again, tagar. It just happens to be in a capsule. So you can see there's only one ingredient there on the bottom, and that's called tagar. Tagar is that Indian valerium. But this just happens to be in a capsule form. Very good for the nerves. Very sedative, particularly in that uh, form. Um, and here we have another sleeping formula. Again, the power is much stronger than the tea. If people are real bad insomniac, I'm going to give them both. You know, and then what do we have in there? Tagar is the first ingredient again. Um, and then you have the Jadamatsi. There it is. Jadamatsi, Shankbushpi, and Sarpaganda. Sarpaganda is kind of like motherwort. It helps relax the heart muscles. We use it also for high blood pressure related to uh, nerves. So, uh, and then we have uh, these herbs in other forms. Yeah, so if somebody's really having sleeping problems, I'll just give them both. Sleeping tea after dinner, start relaxing, and then sleeping tonic in the sleeping tea before bed. Some people have told me they even put the sleeping tonic in a little water next to their bed, and, you know, they wake up at night, they take another shot, get them back to sleep. People have called it kind of a knockout formula. Um, there's other ways now we can also put herbs in our system this one works very well particularly with children sleeping oil and there you got the chamomile in it passion flower in sesame oil and olive oil there's the ashwagandha so all herbs i've already mentioned bala means strength shatavari is very cooling soothing oil uh jasmine licorice and nutmeg also a sedative but there's ones i already taught you uh passion flower and uh, chamomile there in there and it says massage on the soles of your feet before bed this can make like you have a three-year-old baby who's crying at night and not sleeping you just get some of the sleeping oil and massage their feet they're asleep now for an adult with a stressful life it won't be enough but it can help i mean it can keep you asleep because it's absorbing through your skin slowly and in fact you could do your whole body and massage in it and you will sleep i've even had people get the whole bottle put it in the bath, soak in it, and then it, it put them asleep because it just covered their entire body, went into the, all their nervous system, or just massage it over your whole body. But mostly we'd say put it on your feet, put it on your temples, put it on your forehead, even helps with type of tension headaches by putting the oil with the herbs right on the base of the spine. Um, you know, uh, somebody's asking, if they're in capsule form well yeah if you ingest the herb is always a better more potent than the teas the teas are lighter a tea a decoction or infusion will kind of hit you quicker um because you don't have to digest it you can drink the tea in 15 20 minutes it's in your bloodstream in your brain and you start to feel relaxed um, but it won't last as long just a couple hours and it's out of the system um, but when you ingest the herb it can take 30 minutes or an hour even maybe 30, 40 minutes before you start to feel the sedative effect. But it will last much longer and you'll get a lot greater effect for the same quantity of herbs. So, yeah, we have them in capsule. We have them in tea. It depends on the individual and not so much whether their preference, whether they want capsule, but the state of their health condition. Like those capsules are actually stronger than the powder because there's only one herb in it. Um, and we also have it in uh, herbs and ghee. We have Brahmi ghee. We have nerve ghee to rejuvenate the nerves. Mostly I just, this is Kapikachu, our conch. It's used mostly, I'm just using this for neuropathy, uh, tremors, weakness, 
and you know certain conditions like Parkinson's or Lyme's where the nerve system has been damaged the nerve sheath has been hampered and so and a person's very dry they're very dry and so I give them the herbs in ghee working very nicely for children too. one teaspoon and this can affect them um, throughout the throughout the day other uh, ways we can help with the nerves is just massaging the body uh, with this is called a vata oil it's not as sedative as the one I shed earlier the sleeping one but it still has got some there's the ashwagandha in there so we can get it to focus there we go. Passion flower, shatavari, brahmi, licorice, lemon balm, ashwagandha, and there's a little valerium and tulsi. Now, um, it's a very relaxing, and you can massage your whole body with it. For again, once again, the feet, the forehead are the most important areas um, for your nerves. So, if you got your whole body massaged in that relaxing oil, take a salt bath, then get a whole body oil massage then drink the sleeping tea and then throw in some sleeping herbs, you're going to get to sleep. And the beauty of getting yourself to sleep is once you get in a cycle, you maybe you had to depend on the herbs that first night to kind of knock yourself out with the, you know, cup of tea, cup of herbs, oil massage. You had to do a lot, but you slept great. The next day you feel good. You're up all day. You're going all day and then you get tired at night and you're back on you you got yourself back on a cycle and that's what's very important people get out of this routine get out of this cycle and they become imbalanced and it's hard to get back in check so the herbs are like your friends they're helping you to get over this hump to get out of this imbalance to get out of this bad cycle of not sleeping well not then having to have coffee the next day and then you're in this bad cycle we also have other things like um this is uh, Saraswati in gold. And in fact, Saraswati is an herbal formula for the mind, for the memory, for the nerves. And it's got uh, just a little bit of gold in it. And this we use for more uh, 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 like psychotic conditions and s extreme instability in the mind. You only need a couple of drops. So sometimes if we're dealing with a person with this type of mental imbalance, like a bipolar and just really erratic, then we usually you give the herbs in ghee and then we give them a few drops of the Saraswati uh, with gold in it to stabilize the mind and support the nervous system. So herbs can be your friends. They're plants. All these herbs are safe. There's no negative side effects. And in fact, they even have vitamins and minerals in them. And some of these nerve vines they found have a lot of B vitamins, which now we know are suitable for the nervous system. But just taking supplements alone, uh, you know, often is not a, a long term cure as uh, taking the herbs because the herbs have the vit B vitamins, plus they have the, the healing aspect of uh, to the nervous system. And many people are taking other stimulants like too much B vitamins, particularly B12. People are taking big doses because they put large doses in a lot of these synthetic vitamins and these become stimulating so a lot of vitamins are very stimulating sometimes i see people have a lot of vitamins i tell them stop them all just go for the herbs do the adrenal tea in the morning to keep you going then the relaxing tea then the sleeping tea a little sleeping powder if you get anxious do the calming powder keep eating your three meals a day and change your environment don't watch the news don't get involved in politics anything that will stress you out don't answer the phone of any ex calls anything that will stress you out you have to let go and find time for yourself to rest don't push yourself don't try to achieve too much and realize that you need downtime that you cannot push through life you have to pace yourself through life so i hope that helped you and um, i hope that give you hope that you know this type of condition of anxiety nervousness and fearfulness is um, quite treatable with the herbs and changes to your diet and changes to your lifestyle. Now, I don't sell these herbs on the open market, you know, on my website, unfortunately, because you, you, you would maybe you would buy the sleeping tea and then you'd say, oh, it doesn't work. You know, everybody wants their money back now. <laughs> but maybe you're having three cups of coffee every day. See, so then you didn't get rid of the causes. But when you're my patient, you do appointment, 
I'm going to make you promise to slowly cut back on the coffee, go to sleep earlier, not work as hard, eat more. And I'm going to help you to uh, understand the importance of having a regular routine and, and, and not over exerting yourself, even over exercising or uh, over stimulating yourself. I'm going to take out all the stimulants and then results will be very nice. And uh, people get quite uh, fast results. Um, the anxiety one, you can quite quickly. Sometimes it can take people weeks of taking the herbs to get to sleep, particularly if they're underweight. And as they gain more weight, then we see they become more and more and more grounded and more and more stable. And the regular routine, the regular eating, the body getting the nutrition, and the body's stress level drops down. And the beauty is once you get control of your anxiety, once you feel calm, and you know the herbs are there, you may not need to take them. Many people say, I just keep them around in case something happens, like ex-husband calls, then I have to take it, or I'm going to work and my boss, you know, I have to take it. But most of the time, they can keep it uh, under control, particularly if they're working on meditation, yoga, breathing practices to calm the mind. So once again, I hope that helped you. Feel free to contact me. If you need uh, more assistance or like to do an appointment, I'll do an appointment with you on Skype. I have clients in every single state in the United States and many countries in the rest of the world. And then I will mail you the herbs after our appointment and answer any of your questions um, to help you, support you for as long as you need to help to uh, improve your uh, health and, of course, your mental state. Thank you once again.